the D, right? Yeah. For me, yeah, yeah, right. So you you, you already know that. So they said, uh, I still under uh, still under investigation, still for the research. But they said, for the for some cases, if your resolution is very very high, higher than the retina resolution, then just by one eye, just a 2D uh, flapping display, and you will have 3D image. Wow. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of the, so they want to fabricate a, a super high resolution of the OLED. So if you uh, uh, just run in, you see, oh, still very clear. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, that can be used for the uh, virtual reality as well. So the image and this company works for, uh, for this, uh, this kind of display for many, many, many years. And uh, that is the rare fabricate on silicon, because right now, uh, if that is a small display, you don't have to fabricate on the uh, 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 glass, you can fabricate on the silicon. On the silicon, the advantage is you can, you can integrate all the uh, uh, driving circuit on this silicon subject. So that is, uh, you can have the uh, micro display, uh, virtual reality, whatever. Okay, so that is for the display. Any question or anything you think about that? Any idea? So, so basically that is just a very thin layer, it's organic, and just whatever you put the uh, electrodes. Oops, and on. Yeah. Um, right now when we go to the movies, we have this, this reflective screen, and we have a projected image onto it. Do you, do you think that, the, that in the future, they would, get rid of the, they would get rid of the projector completely, and then just have like a gigantic uh, display in front of, the, in front of the, the viewers? And no more, no more projecting of images, the images is, is on the screen? Yeah, it depends on the lots of the we we, we can we can explain it from different aspects from technology from the uh, we say the what do you want uh, to the movie? Yeah. So right now, for example, one direction is virtual reality. Okay, if you go to the movie a movie theater, you want to have a huge screen, right? But actually, the huge screen means you have the larger viewing angle. Right. But when the when the monitor when your screen is closer and closer to your eyes, mm -hmm. the, the side can be shrink. Right. Well, or another thing is if we talk about the with um, with the the OLED, the OLED displays, you can you can upscale the size of them. Maybe like in a in a, in a movie theater, you would have the primary screen in front of you. And then the walls could also be screened as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you could be watching. So you'd have you have the movie in front of you and to the sides of you as well in the movie theater, right? You could do that. Yes. True. That's uh, immersive. And maybe yeah, even in the ceiling. Yeah, maybe uh, the ceiling. Uh, too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's true. So, so yeah, I mean, but you can use projector, uh, for example. Uh, but but you wouldn't need a projector in that case. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. You can use a video wall. You, you, yeah, you would, have, you would have one video wall in front of you, and then one video wall on each side, and then that makes a full immersion effect. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. true. I'm opening up a movie theater chain. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pattern. The pattern. That's the pattern, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Now I think that's. I, I can see that that's probably going to happen in the next you know, 15 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. No more. No more projectors. Yeah, so that, yeah, that is possible. Yeah, but yeah, of course. Yeah, that, that's uh, lots of the application, mm -hmm. as well as the lighting. Sure. Yeah, you can have the wall lighting on the wall, not right. on the top, right. not on the ceiling. Yeah, it's a brief com uh, comparison borrowed from uh, Professor John G. Kido. He he won the prize uh, last year, the yeah. SID. Yeah. Right, big price. And he's very famous in this area. So, okay, so for the 
uh, some comparison between the OLED and LED. So LED is a point source, and you need some optics to make it, unif uh, un uh, make it uniform, to become a planar source or so. But OLED itself is a kind of the uh, planar light source, so you can have the larger size. And because uh, for the OLED is a very broad emission band, so from the blue to the red, and it's very broad. So when you use as a light source, you can see the color is beautiful. So it's a color render index. The preference is 100. It's a black body, radi uh, black body radiation, but for the OLED, it can be a size 95, something like that. So that is good. And uh, uh, how about the voltage and the normal LED? Uh, they try to develop some uh, PN type, P type, and N type organic material so that to reduce the drying voltage, and they can achieve about um, four volts, less than four volts, uh, to one thousand nits. And uh, of course, they can do some tricks. So it's a red, green, and blue. And uh, that's the transparent one. So do some engineering. And you can have the lighting. So you can change the color. LED can do the same thing right now. You can change the uh, cyan, yellow, different color, depends on your mood. Yeah. <laughs> of the OLED. So that, that's very simple. You just, it's a very simple, you have the red, green, blue pixels. Not, not as small as the display, but you can still have some pixels over here. On the same subject. For the LED, you cannot put on the same subject, but for the OLED, you can do that. So for the LED, you have to have different uh, uh, chip, and uh, you, can, you can use that. Uh, module to put them together, but, but for the OLED you can fabricate like that. So you can go to the uh, website to see, you can have different kinds of the lighting fixture, something like that. So you can, oh, it's transparent, but actually it's kind of lighting. And that is the uh, OLED lighting in the kitchen somewhere, everywhere, like that. And uh, there are some recent uh, development of the high efficiency uh, oil LED lighting. For example, that's this year. The SEL is uh, uh, in 1,000 nits. 1,000 nits is uh, typically indoor lighting. And they can achieve almost 150 lumen per watt. But the uh, uh, color temperature is uh, less than 3,000 K, which means it's a, a little bit yellow. Uh, but yellow is something good or bad. The, the, the bad thing is that is not pure white, but for the good thing is that is very suitable for the uh, 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 home use uh, because that's like a candle, give you some feeling of warmth. So, and they say, oh, please touch it somewhere. Anyway, so they say, please touch it. Why? Because when you touch it, it is cold not hot. So what does that mean? That means the input of the electrical, electrical power transformed to the optical power rather than the heat. So they say, oh, please touch it. It's very cold. So that is the uh, high efficiency. And Panasonic, they also have a, a similar one, but the efficiency, they have the high efficiency white OLED. Uh, yeah, it's the two years before. So still see some uh, progress. And right now the Konica Minota, there's, you can see some, uh, you can see the website and they have their uh, brand symbols and they, they say they have the uh, flexible, uh, different shape of the OLED. And the other, so, so not right now there's some demonstration of technology. And for the Konica Minota, they have some products. But of course, they have no price. You can ask about the price. The other is LG. LG they have the their website. You can see different kind of size. You can have the, the, the lighting fixtures like that. 
Maybe we can use uh, OLED for LCD backlight. <laughs> Flexible. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's possible. So how do you think? Uh, is any uh, uh, disadvantage for the LED? Well, depending on the um, uh, brightness, because uh, you know, for backlight, usually we need uh, much more than thousand nits. So the lifetime has to be considered. And it's uh, flexible. We need a flexible backlight. Yeah. Then you can... Uh, bendable. Bendable. Local dimming. Let me see what we can do. Okay. So that's a demonstration of the recent progress of the uh, uh, OLED display, uh, that is uh, what we can do by this kind of the uh, technology. So uh, the, the origin of the uh, device, the basic uh, material system and structure is something like that. You have the PN junction, you have a, a very thin hundred nanometer and uh, you just have the anode, castle, and you can delete under that. Okay? So, any, any question? Until now? So, let's see how it happened. So, we need to jump back to see some photo, uh, physical. Uh, oops. Photo physical properties. So we need to think about, actually it's also kind of the uh, similar. Uh, for the semiconductor, it's kind of bonding, but it's also the bonding. So uh, if you put two atoms together, uh, they will form uh, some bonding, and they have been, there are some splitting in energy. So the same, you have to put your uh, electron from the lower level to the higher level. So if that is field here, so we call it, in semiconductor, we call that valence band. So here is empty, we call that conduction band. But for the organic material, we have different terms. We call that the HOMO. HOMO means the highest occupied molecular orbital. So what is the occupied? Occupied by the electron. So here we, we know there's a poly exclusion principle, which means in one state, you can have two electrons one spin up and the other spin down. Okay? So this is the LUMO. What's LUMO? LUMO is the lowest uh, occupied, uh, occupied by the electron and molecular orbital. So that is kind of the, we call the molecular orbital because it's a molecule. So uh, as we know, if we put two atoms closer and closer and there are some potential between them. So actually the potential will decrease when you put them to get uh, closer and closer. So the lowest point is the bonding net. So for example, here is about 1.34 angstrom. That's a typical uh, bonding net. And if you move them uh, even closer, and uh, there are some interaction between two nuclei, so the, 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 the potential increase very huge. So typically there is some, something like the parabolic shape like that. So, uh, for example, it's kind of the uh, very uh, simple molecule. So how can we describe that? And uh, here is the uh, 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 double bond here, so it's strong. So actually there is a phase, so the C dot angle will change, phi angle will change, so there are lots of the uh, vibration mode. So typically we use so-called the potential energy surface to describe uh, this kind of the energy of the molecule. So uh, it's, it's, it's very complex, but sometimes uh, we can have uh, something here is a ground state, here's the first excited state, and the vertical axis is the energy, and here's the coordination. So you can think about something like the the distance between the two uh, atoms. But actually it's more complex because 
uh, there are some uh, difference in the uh, different angle or so. So, as we said before, for each molecule, we can think that is kind of the quantum dot. So inside, because that is very small, just several nanometer angstrom level, so the energy state will split. Okay. So once you, uh, if that is on ground state, so that is the ground state and at the lowest state over here. Once you uh, accept some energy, for example, in the semiconductor, you use the photo excitation, or you use the uh, current injection, they will promote to the higher state. So they will uh, jump from the ground state to the first excited state. And there are some wave function over here. So we know from the quantum physics, we need to have the integral of the wave function. So they will jump to uh, from the uh, zero to zero, or zero to one. Uh, we can see uh, here's the maximum. So from the zero to four prime, there's a, a, a maximum. So that is absorption. So once you jump here, so for example, from zero to n, then the maximum absorption, then up to the excited state is the electronic state, and they will relax very fast to the uh, 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 ground vibration state here. Then they will go back here. Sometimes they will have the fluorescence. So A means absorption. So absorption spectrum is a higher energy. And for the uh, fluorescence, they will go back to, they will select which state. They will see the different uh, uh, wave function overlap. So for example, back to here. So it's a fluorescence. So typical. Typically, there are some offset, and but the shape is similar. So they are have the they will have similar uh, absorption and spectral uh, so absorption. Sometimes it's not always true. Sometimes they will have the similar shape of the absorption and emission spectrum. For example, in this uh, molecule, pyridine. So here is the wavelength from shorter to longer with energy. So that is the uh, 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 emission and absorption uh, 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 characteristic, uh, characteristics. So typically we call that the frame quantum uh, principle because we have to uh, have the uh, wavelength overlap and uh, the difference uh, between the absorption and the uh, fluorescence peak, we call that the star shift. Okay. So uh, that is how we determine the energy level in the uh, uh, organic material. So remember that uh, when we talk about the uh, semiconductor, we say the fan gap was determined by the uh, uh, material, nitride system, phosphide system. But right now, that's a marker. So that was uh, determined by the, uh, we call that the homo and lumo. So typically we say, oh, here's the homo, that is the lumo. And uh, in semiconductor, typically, we have the E versus K. E versus K. K means from different direction. But for the organic material, it's different. Uh, we don't have the E versus K because for the K means you from different direction. We we use the diff, uh, we use the E versus R over here. So 
So here is the E versus R. Okay. So that is the uh, basic absorption and emission. Then we need to consider about uh, our electron uh, transition. So for the ground state, we said, oh, that's simple because that's, uh, that's homo, right? That's lumo. So we have one spin up and one spin down. For example, if we have the photo excitation, so we can move one up. So this is, this is up, this is down. However, right now, there are two states. So this one can be up or down. This one can be up or down, right? So actually, they can be, we call that a singly or triplet. Depends on the, uh, your orientation, your spin of the, uh, your electrons. So, uh, typically, uh, uh, for the singly, States in triplet state. Triplet state is always less than the triplet state energy. It's always less than the singlet state energy. Because there's a, or you calculate, there's a, we call the electron exchange energy. Uh, S1 minus electron exchange energy is T1. And electron exchange energy is always positive. So T1 state is always lower than this one. So think about that if we have the uh, molecule on the ground state, then we can use the photon excite the molecule. Then that will excite if the energy is super high, maybe go to the S2 value. But if we think, oh, maybe excite to this value, and this obey the frame quantum principle. Okay, then they re uh, release energy to the S1 state over here. And they can go back with the fluorescence. So the A and the F here is the, uh, re I represent the stock shift. However, that is also possible to have, we call the uh, inter-system crossing. I see it here, inter-system crossing. Because S1 is one system, T1 is another system. So possibly the spin will go from up to down this duration. And for the T, it is also possible they can have, if they have some thermal energy, and that is close enough, that is possible to back to the S1. Okay? So, uh, the, uh, the transition between S and the T, we call that inter-system closing, so it's inter-system closing. And uh, the other Thing is the internal uh, conversion. Internal conversion, uh, I see over here. Internal conversion means uh, from T to T, or the S to S, uh, S to S, or to the vibration mode. We are not the virtual reality, we are the vibration mode. <laughs> vibration relaxation, so that's the kind of heat. Okay? So let's see what happens when we excite a molecule. So if we excite that from here up to here. So from the semiconductor, we say we have radiative and non-radiative decay, right? So how about organic material? So they have the radiative, that's fluorescence. They have the non-radiative, that's a vibration mode. Vibration relaxation. So that's heat, non-radiative, that's a radiative channel. So that is super fast, that's about narrow second. So typically, uh, for example, some organic material was used for the organic laser. So their quantum efficiency, in terms of fluorescence quantum efficiency, can be higher than 90%. So that is super high, higher than the semiconductor. However, there's a problem here is uh, possibly they can go to the triplet. And triplet state is a mystery state. We call that the dark state. Uh, we are not talking about the Star Wars. But anyway, think about that. So if that is triplet, if that is excited state, right? It's triplet, excited state. Is there a triplet ground state? Is it possible? Can you go back like this? No. Fully exclusion principle tells you you cannot have the same spin in one state. 
So that is super slow in general case. That is super slow if you want to go from T1 back to S0 because you have to turn your spin. So theoretically, it is forbidden. Okay? So that is the phosphorescence. Phosphorescence, phosphorescence means very slow. So if there's no other management, they can have the millisecond or even second uh, uh, lifetime. So mean, that means very, very slow. Okay, so once you pump it up, then that is very fast, and some vibration mode. But if there is an inter-system crossing, go here. Oh, unfortunately, that is the, the uh, uh, that is the uh, phosphorescence. That would be super slow. Okay, so that's the general picture. So that's the photo excitation. Then let's think about the uh, electrical excitation. What will happen? So remember that that is an uh, insulator. Okay, so there's no electron hole in this kind. There's no free electron and free hole in the glass, right? Not, not on your window. So the same. Uh, now in the organic material, so you have to put electron and hole out, uh, from the from the electron, put it inside, and when they have in the the same molecule, then they can be combined to give the light. So when you put the uh, electron pair from here, so how many will go to the single? And how many will go to the triple? So actually, they have the ratio of the 25% of the singling and 75% of the tripling. So which means you have the 100 electron hole pair inject into your OLED, not LED. For LED, internal quantum field can be very high. We talked about last week. But if you put into the typical organic material, only 25% can emit the light. Other 75%, they will become triply, and that will be super slow. And uh, there are no places to go. So the only way is they will go to the vibration, so that is heat. Okay? So the heat will degrade OLED. So that is the problem for the OLED for several, several years. And uh, uh, this kind of the uh, the gain between the singly and triply uh, is, still, uh, is still there, uh, and that's of the uh, uh, issues uh, we can. Uh, there are lots of research we can do. Okay. So. Yeah, any question? It's about time. Oh, it's about time? Okay. So, any uh, question? I have a question about the flexible display. Um, because um, if, um, if it is flexible, it means it will not be a perfect plane. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the image is designed for a perfect plane. Mm -hmm. If it is not flat, will it uh, affect the performance? Will people like it? Do you read the newspaper? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, of course, right now you can use the computer. <laughs> they all read that. <laughs> yeah, right. Your, or the, some small books. Yeah. I see. Yeah, that's true. When you read the newspaper, you just read, you, you have to make it flat. But the good thing is that can be foldable, so it depends. Yeah, of course, there are some other kinds of the. Uh, consideration, so they have some features. They just make you foldable and you can uh, put it in the pocket easily, but when you read it, actually, that's flat. Thank you. You, you, you can use that fixtures to design. I saw your photos um, of movie uh, for flexible display and do they have a uh, circular polarizer? I saw a very strong ambient light reflection. If you can go back to any uh, flexible
flexible movie, flexible display movie. A anyone, and when you take the uh, the uh, video, I, I find that the, the reflection is uh, quite strong. Yeah. See here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. 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 But uh, does this have a circular polarizer? Mm. Well, probably not. I don't know, but because there are some, if you you see there are the black yeah. scene, then typically yes. I think that that will be that will be a circular polarizer. But probably because not. Yeah, not. if the, if there is a circular polarizer, it may not be so bendable. Oh, yeah, possible. <laughs> That's why it has a strong ambient reflection. But they have a touch panel on the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's add uh, additional reflect reflection. Yes. Yeah. So we are not quite sure about if mm. that is on the top of the touch mm. panel. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other? Yeah, I have a question more about the previous topic which we discussed uh, about virtual reality. So, uh, I, I, I get the question if uh, the optical illusions are actually related to those for the FQs which we just mentioned. Because, I mean, uh, when you just can draw uh, something nicely, why it, it seems like it's 3D? Because uh, I, I try to think, is it related to any of those cues? And I, and I, I couldn't really... Uh, find uh, which exactly uh, it relates to. His question related to what you said, you know, if you have a resolution higher than retina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe they, uh, I'm not sure. Let's say if you draw something in the paper, you can say like you, the pixel there is a smaller than the retina. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know either because they, they, when they report, they say so. But uh, I would say that's possibly related to t uh, related to some when you have some motion. So sometimes, possibly, you need some resolution higher than the written display. So that will be affect your affect your your. Actually, for one eye, you can have the illusion. For the 3D, you know that? Oh, yeah, because two uh, cues are doing two eyes. Yeah, right. So, I was, yeah, I would say maybe the higher resolution means when there's some motion, possibly you need. Yeah, but I mean, if, what I feel like for, actually, you don't need any of the, you, you can uh, create a, uh, 3D without those cues, it's like just like an illusion. So, just, uh, so I, I don't know what is this, it's just uh, uh, acquired uh, uh, fake 3, 3D perception by a human being or... Yeah, by like your brain. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the illusion comes from your brain, but you need a very high resolution display to demonstrate that, or your brain cannot be cheated. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Okay, um, we have a homework for you today.